Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and so today on Reddit, on the r slash AMD subreddit, um, Addis301, he's a Czech re motherboard reviewer, uh, he posted pictures of the B450 Aorus Pro motherboard, and he also drew my attention, and well, it's actually recently come to my attention, that actually Gigabyte advertises both the B450, uh, B450 Aorus Pro and the Ultra Gaming, uh, the X470 Ultra Gaming as an 8 plus 3 phase, and actually, if we go through some of the other socket for uh, AM4 motherboards they have, I mean, the Gaming 5, which is on the same uh, VRM as the Ultra Gaming, uh, also marketed as an 8 plus 3 phase. And uh, what else do we have? We have the, oh, the B450 Aorus M, uh, also marketed as an 8 plus 3 phase. And now this motherboard already drew to my attention the fact that this does not look... Um, like, this looked like it was missing the 8th, like, it, it didn't have the 8 high side MOSFETs that you would have on the X470 Ultra Gaming. But anyway, um, so, like, yeah, so th these boards, they're all advertised as having an 8 plus 3 phase VRM, okay? And, uh, <laughs> I've actually managed to get a pretty long-winded comment from a Gigabyte marketing representative about how th these are totally an 8 plus 3 phase. So let's let's actually talk about that because as far as I'm concerned, this these this, like this this is this it, this isn't an eight plus three phase. Um, it's like it has almost eight phases worth of components, but it's not an eight plus three phase. This doesn't even almost have eight phases worth of components, nor does this actually. Like, th these are just straight four plus these are straight four plus threes with an extra inductor on each phase, which. Um, yeah, and so I'm going to actually show you what it is that Gigabyte is doing on their motherboards in terms of like, I'm, I'm going to show you what electrically they're, they're wiring up their motherboards like, because um, I, it's just, yeah, th 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 this is too much, okay? See, we have a lot of other motherboard vendors who, this motherboard's not the one I wanted, because I'm an idiot, but um, if we do pull up a motherboard I did want, like this one, right? This, this motherboard does the exact same thing with its VRM as the X470 Ultra Gaming, except MSI doesn't talk about it. So I don't have an issue with that because MSI isn't telling you that this is an 8 plus 2 phase, which it isn't. It's a 4 plus 2. And since MSI doesn't mention anywhere on their website that it's an 8 plus 2, I don't see a problem with that because they're not lying to you. But Gigabyte is saying that their 4 phase is an 8 phase, which I have a problem with. And we're, we're going to get to why it's a 4 phase. So, uh, you know, MSI does the same thing, but they, they don't, they, they don't, you know, um, lie about it, basically. That's the only reason why I give them a pass there. Uh, Azrock, same thing. Like, this is not a six phase. <laughs> this is a three plus three, but I can't find anywhere on this page a mention of how many phases this motherboard is supposed to have, so I don't have a problem with them advertising this as a, well, they're not advertising it as an anything. They're just like, yeah, it's a motherboard. It's got a VRM. I, actually, they don't even mention that it has much of a VR. Like, th th this is basically all they talk about on the, the, the VRM. And it's just like, yeah, it has a bit more extra copper, it's digital power, and that's it, actually. That, that's it. Not much in the way of describing the VRM. Uh, Asus, you know, they have motherboards like this one right here, which totally looks like it's an 8 plus 2 phase, and uh, it's a 4. It's a 4 plus 2. But no mention of how many phases this has. So again, I don't have a problem with that, because, um, I mean... Yeah, th this is a trap for, you know, inexperienced reviewers, inexperienced consumers, but I don't fundamentally see a problem with them doing this because they're not straight up, like, they're implying there's more phases than there really is, but at this point, I think, uh, uh, I don't know, like, reviewers definitely should be aware that you, just sticking more inductors on the output does not m make more phases. So let's go over why, why Gigabyte's uh, eight phase, and actually what all of these boards are doing, we're, we're just going to go what, what all of these boards are doing and why it doesn't qualify as an eight phase, okay? <laughs> because, so, the the B450, the, the Gigabyte boards here, they all use this chip right here, which is an ISL95712, right? And uh, this is a programmable 1234 phase for the core, so that's for your V-Core output, and one, two, three phase for Northbridge, and let's just zoom in on that, so that part right there. 
right? So it's a four plus three phase voltage controller. It goes up to four plus three phases. You could run it as a one plus one or even a one plus zero if you felt like it, but it goes up to four plus three. Um, and if we actually take a look at how it's supposed to be wired up in a simplified application circuit for, yeah. So here's like a typical application diagram, basically. Yeah, it says as much. <laughs> um, so you have PWM4, PWM3, and then you have straight drive. And this is really, really important. You cannot double off of this. It is literally impossible to run a doubler off of a drive. Like you can't run doublers off of this because that's a drive signal. That's not a, that's not a PWM signal. A doubler takes a PWM signal and splits it between two phases. This doesn't output four PWM signals. You cannot make eight phases out of this voltage controller. Okay, and somebody might be like, oh, but you could totally double PWM4 and PWM3. Yes, but if you did that, the f voltage controller still sees the entire VRM as a four phase. And so phases one and two would be doing twice as much work as all of the other phases. So that would not work. That would just be completely stupid because basically like it's it just not worth it. Okay, so you wouldn't do that. That's dumb. Um, so you can't make a f like you can't double off of this chip. Be, um, because you'd end up with some asymmetrical monstrosity that, you know, it, it might run, um, and the output voltage quality might not be incredible, might not, won't be necessarily terrible, but from an economic, like, from any, like, there wouldn't be any good reason to do it, okay? It would not give you any real advantages, uh, in, in the real world, um, be, because you'd still have two phases, which would just, like, you'd get this imbalanced monstrosity that, like, you wouldn't want that. Um, because the, the voltage controller would still treat it like, like it would still see a four phase and then you'd have the two doublers doing their thing. So you'd have like four phases that are being interleaved differently from the other two and it would just work out really, really weird. Because essentially you'd have like four phases which get half as many PWM pulses as like two other ones and yeah, it, it'd just be a mess. So then, let's take a look at how a multi-phase uh, buck converter is supposed to be designed. Um, and we're just going to use this lovely, ref uh, app, you know, uh, document from Texas Instruments. They, they know how to make a VRM. So uh, we're, we're just going to go with them. You don't have to trust me for, for what I'm doing here, um, you know, if you have an issue with that. So here we have a multi-phase buck regulator overview. Multi-phase buck regulator is a parallel set of buck power stages as shown in figure one and figure two, which figure two is here. So you can see you have, you know, um, multiple power stages, but basically what we want is the, the electrical diagram here and uh, each with its own inductor and set of power MOSFETs. Okay, so each with its own inductor and set of power MOSFETs. That's, that's important. So you need your, uh, we're going to go over that. And collectively, these components are all called a phase. Okay, these phases are connected in parallel and share both input and output capacitors during steady state operation individual uh, individual phases are active at spaced intervals equal to three uh, equal to 30 uh, 360 degrees divided by n throughout the switching period where n is the total number of phases so you can see how the PWM signals are staggered here. Um, so they're running out of phase and uh, where n is the total number of phases, figure two shows the a TPS, yeah, multi-phase. So basically this is like a real world multi-phase buck converter example. And then if we go down here, today's controllers mostly most commonly support applications needing two to eight phases. Techniques exist to extend the phase count to 12 or more. But these are outside the scope of the, this document. As a general guideline, the maximum phase current should be kept between 30 to 40 amps. Depending on budget, efficiency targets, available cooling methods, the maximum phase current can be increased. But it is highly recommended to do a thorough study of the ramifications before com committing to the design. Basically, you generally don't want to make one massive phase, okay? So, like, you totally could build a single phase with 100 amps of current capability. You just wouldn't want to do that because uh, it probably would take up just as much space as if you just built a uh, 250 amp phases or four, well, three 33 amp phases. Um, four 25 amp phases would probably start taking up more space. But uh, still, it depends on the design. 
Um, and here's the advantages of a multi-phase uh, multi regulator. This is why you actually want a multi-phase. So you get reduced input capacitance, reduced output capacitance, improved thermal performance and efficiency at high load currents, improved transient over and undershoot during load transients. Okay. So then um, that's kind of why you'd want a multi-phase VRM. We're not going to read the rest of the document. If you're interested in reading it, I highly recommend it. Very interesting document to read. Uh, covers basically everything you need to know about designing a multi-phase VRM. Now then, um, we're going to get out of here and take a look at what it is that Gigabyte has on their motherboard. So this is copy-pasted out of that do document, and uh, we're going to compare it to the, to the board. So this is the B450 board, okay? Now let's just label some components. So we have a low side... Oops, I'm on the wrong layer. That's our low side MOSFET. That's the other low side MOSFET. That's the high side MOSFET. So... And then these are our inductors or chokes. Okay, so I'm going to label them with C or coil. So C works again. Um, and Gigabyte will tell you that this is two phases. And I'm going to tell you that's a freaking lie. <laughs> okay, because... Um, so, so that's what they have on the B450 board. Now, if we look at the X470 motherboard, what they have there is uh is very similar it's actually the same pcb as for like the same vrm layout if, if you've noticed like um like y you see this extra high side mosfet here you see that blank spot right oops wrong layer again see that blank spot right there yeah that's where that high side mosfet would have been if you know they didn't need to down cost the motherboard so that's kind of that so here you have two high side MOSFETs, two low side MOSFETs, and then two in uh, two two of your coils, and uh, you know th they run it off of a, and you can see that we have the two drivers here, so that's uh, those should be ISL 60, uh, 6625s. and then of course um, that chip over there, that's the ninety five seven one two, that directly drives this phase, and it directly drives this phase probably because yeah that. That layout makes sense. I mean, they could totally also drive that one and then they, these could be like that, but you get the idea. Basically, there's two two of these phases are driven off of the uh, off of the ISL 95712. And so you have these lovely blocks. And now if they had a different voltage controller, you could totally split that like that. But what they actually have electrically, if we look at this diagram, um, we're going to erase that bottom phase, which basically means... Um, so if we just scribble... I want black for this. Um, so we're just going to ignore, like, we're just going to act like this is a two phase. Okay. And that means basically we can ignore this PWM signal down here and this one would shift over a bit. So right now these are like, th this gap is too small. It would move over a bit that way. Right. And then we'd have two individual phases. But if we consider what Gigabyte has on their boards here, right, we have two low side MOSFETs, two high side MOSFETs, and two coils. And what they're doing. Um, electrically looks like this. So that's your gate of the MOSFET. Okay, that's that's the terminal that you use to turn the MOSFET on and off. And basically, on those Gigabyte motherboards, those are connected like that. So your high side MOSFETs turn on at the same time, which means you can't have two separate PWM signals. You have to have one. And the same is true for the low side MOSFET. Those two are tied together as well. So there, there's your high side, there's your low side, because the high side MOSFET is called the high side MOSFET because it switches your high voltage, right? Because that, that's going to be like 12 volts there. So that's higher than the output voltage. So that's why it's called the high side one. And then you have your high side and your low side there. And then we have our two inductors, right? And so your MOSFETs are in parallel like that. But it gets worse. <laughs> Not only are the MOSFETs in parallel, the actual connection between... There's also a wire like that between the phases. Um, and at that point, like, honestly, if you already just put the MOSFETs in parallel, this second PWM signal doesn't work, okay? If, if, we, if we didn't have this connection there, like, you'd already be on one PWM signal. So... This is one phase, okay? It is one phase with twice as many inductors and twice as many low side MOSFETs. Um, though I guess if you, you know, if you make your definition of a phase just a grouping of an inductor, a high side MOSFET, and a low side MOSFET, then 
I guess you could get away with calling this a two-phase. Like, I, I, I wouldn't consider it a two-phase because they're not out of phase, they share the same control signal. Your, all of the benefits that that document from Texas Instruments talks about, right? Um, the reduced input capacitance. The reduced input capacitance is because of the adding additional phases to a design decreases the RMS input current flowing through the decoupling capacitors, uh, reducing the ripple on the input voltage. Fewer capacitors are needed. So basically it gives you better voltage regulation, um, self-heating effects and better efficiency as well slightly. Um, but the main reason is that if you have is because you have those two phases interleaving. But in Gigabyte's motherboard design, this blue row doesn't exist for that second phase, okay? That's just not there because they're in parallel. So you don't have them sharing the current, you know? So you basically have, it, you don't have a pulse of 20 amps on phase one, and then a pulse of 20 amps on phase two, and then a pulse of 20 amps on phase three, and then a pulse of 20 amps on phase four, and then a pulse of 20, you, you get the idea. And you'd go through all eight of your phases, and each of your phases would get a pulse of 20 amps from the 12 volts input, um, and you basically, when the other phases are turned off, when their high side MOSFET is turned off, then the, the current would be freewheeling through the low side MOSFET. Um, but in the Gigabyte motherboard, you have two high side MOSFETs switch on at the same time and apply current to two inductors at the same time. You apply the 12 volts to two inductors at the same time. So you only have, um, you know, one switch on, second switch on, third switch on, fourth switch on. You don't get eight. You don't, you know, there's no eight interleaving. So if we have... Uh, you know, if we have 160 amps output current, on a real 8 phase you would get pulses of 20 amps because there's 8 phases and each phase has 20 amps going through it. But on a, the Gigabyte version, you have 20 amps going through each inductor, there's 8 inductors, you have 20 amps going through each low side MOSFET, there's 8 low side MOSFETs, you have 20 amps going through each high side MOSFET, but the high side MOSFETs switch on at the same, two of them switch on at the same time. So when those two high side MOSFETs switch on, you have 40 amps coming from the input, which is what gives you, so you don't get that reduced input capacitance because you don't get that reduced current draw, right? The, the RMS input current flowing through, like th this whole thing just doesn't apply because you're not doing that. You're not interleaving those phases. You don't get the reduced output capacitance benefit either. And uh, the, you get the improved thermal performance and efficiency because you have a bunch of MOSFETs in parallel. And so they're, uh, you know, low side, uh, they're, like the, their um, on resistance is lower because of that, because they're in parallel. Uh, but you also don't get this improved transient over and undershoot during load transients, which th these are basically all voltage, mostly voltage regulation uh, related. So reduced input capacitance, reduced output capacitance, they're all tied to the fact that you basically get r less voltage ripple. So you need less capacitors to, you know, filter out all of the, well, really you're dealing with the current swings and that causes the voltage to swing up and down. Um, but you don't want the voltage going up and down with your car, like, you know, with, with the, the current pull of the VRM. So you need a bunch of capacitance if you have a low phase count to smooth that out. Now, improved transient over and under shoot during load transients. Again, that's just depending on how many phases you have. Um, and Gigabyte doesn't get that because they don't have eight phases there. Um, so... Yeah, that, that's kind of that. And now then let, let's let's go back to this motherboard, right? So this, you you like, yes, th this right here is made up of two phases worth of components. It's just not run out of phase, so I wouldn't consider it two phases, okay? this These turn on at the same time because you wouldn't be, like if this was a real eight phase, as I said, it would be like 20, 20, you know, you'd get 20 amps through this one and then 20 amps, well, 20 amps through here, 20 amps through there, but instead what you get here is you get 40 amps through both of them at the same time. And so you don't get the, the ripple reduction. And um, if we go to, to the, the B450 board, it gets worse. You notice how there's no high side MOSFET? What does that look like on the electrical diagram? Oh, I don't know. What would happen if we just scribbled that over? That's what Gigabyte is doing on that B450 board. At that point, you can't claim it's an eight phase. There's like, you know, 
here, here's the thing, okay? If your definition of a phase is two, a high side MOSFET, low side MOSFET inductor, then yeah, this is a phase. It's not running out of phase with this phase, but it's a phase, okay? And, and I guess you can call it that. You're not getting the reduced input ripple, or like you don't get the reduce reduction in input ripple, you don't get the reduction in output ripple, and you don't get the benefit you don't get the benefits in transient response, but it's it's still you can still claim it's two separate phases. They're just not running out of phase. That is just you know, you, you can do that. But here's the thing. If your definition is to a high side MOSFET, a low side MOSFET, and an inductor, then the hell is this, right? Because you have a high side MOSFET, a low side MOSFET, and an inductor, and then you have an inductor and a low side MOSFET. Where, where, where's that second high side? Where's that second phase? Where is it? Because I, I can't see a second phase. All I can see is one phase with two low side MOSFETs and two inductors, which is totally valid. You can totally do that. The funny thing about inductors in parallel is that they act like one inductor of half the DC resistance. Like, we're going to simplify an inductor, right? So, um, you might need for... Basically, if you have a 420 NH... You know, so 400 and... Okay, no, that's 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 an odd number. Let's just go 440, um, which is, like, normal for this type of inductor, especially in this kind of application. You'll normally find something around 400 to 600 nanohenry on most motherboards. So 440 nanohenry, and we're going to say it has 1 milliohm of direct current resistance, okay? Right? And that's going to be the parameter for one of these, okay? Well, if you put two of them in parallel like that... Okay, you get this. Like, so if one of those is that, um, then two of those, right, two, uh, I, well, if you have them two in parallel, what you get is 220 NH and 0 0.5 milliohms of uh, resistance. So you get slightly better current handling capacity from a thermal perspective. You get slightly less inductance. You also get more saturation current. But we're just going to ignore the the other parameters because, like, we, we could go on and on and list all of the, the parameters. But basically, um, if you just bought one inductor, right, one inductor of this value, it is 100% equivalent to what Gigabyte has, assuming it also matched the required saturation current and all of that, okay? Um, so, you know, th this th this doesn't need to be here. That could totally be replaced with one inductor, okay? And at that point, it's like, well, this is not two phases, is it? <laughs> it's not two phases. There's, there's two inductors that really don't need to be there. There's two MOSFETs on the low side in parallel, but guess what? Two low side MOSFETs in parallel can also be replaced by one better MOSFET. If you just buy a better MOSFET, you can replace two of your low side ones. Um, because, again, you, it's just your RDS on would get cut in half. Now, admittedly, your, uh, your gate charge of the, the, the single MOSFET would actually increase, but that actually happens when these are in parallel as well. So, you know, you, you can literally, like... Basically, my problem with this, and even here, even here, you could totally throw out the extra inductor and just put one inductor, and it would still function. It would still work if you just had a bit better inductor that did literally twice the, literally just had twice the uh, electrical ratings and of of the inductors already of the two inductors here. You you could just put one. You know, you could just put one of them instead. And you could do the same for the low side MOSFETs and the same for the high side MOSFETs. And the VRM would function exactly the same because the high side MOSFETs turn on at the same damn time. Okay? You couldn't do that with a real 8 phase because in a real 8 phase, those two high side MOSFETs turn on separately. So you need individual high side MOSFETs. And then you need individual low side MOSFETs because if you had, if you had two high side MOSFETs, on two different PWM signals sharing one low side MOSFET, um, either you'd get a short circuit to ground from through through your low like high side low side ground, you'd get a short circuit like that, 
or your low side, like, you'd get this really, like, you wouldn't be getting the PWM cycle you want to be getting, because you're, like, you'd end, like, you wouldn't be getting the voltage you want, okay, because you'd be running two PWM signals into this, the low side MOSFET, and, like, it would turn off, like, your, your PW, like, like, your duty cycle for that phase would be completely screwed up if you tried to do that, okay? And if you tried to put one inductor on those two phases, you'd get the same issue if you had um, two high side MOSFETs or two low side MOSFETs on one inductor. Well, actually, no, you can kind of do that. Um, where, like, NVIDIA has done that on some GPUs for power balancing, where they have eight phases, but, uh, well, they have eight sets of MOSFETs, but they have seven output inductors. And basically what they do is they skip, um, like, th they will rebalance where your GPU is pulling power, like if it's pulling it from the PCIe slot or your PCIe power cables, um, by basically changing which, where the, one of the phases pulls its high side current from. Like it'll, sometimes it'll pull it from the PCIe slot, sometimes it'll pull it from the, uh, pull it from the, uh, from the, what's it called? Uh, PCIe power cables. Right, but that's a seven phase. That's not an eight. That's a seven phase with some fancy power balancing added on. It's not an eight phase, and this is also not an eight phase because functionally you could replace every single one of the components that the gigabyte has here twice. You could replace it with one component, and this thing would still behave exactly the same as it does right now. Um, so yeah, gigabyte is just straight up lying about how many phases they have because. Like, you know, you, there's, like, the B450 board doesn't even have the bloody high side, two high side MOSFETs. Like, it's not there. This is not doubling, okay? You can't say it's doubled. You've put twice as many components that does not make it twice as many phases. Because here's the thing, there's graphics cards out there which have two low side MOSFETs, one inductor, and one high side MOSFET. Why do they do that? Because you want a extremely low uh, RDS on on your low side, which will significantly increase your um, uh, your power efficiency if you're running low voltage, very, very high currents. Uh, the less resistance you have on your low side MOSFET, the better your efficiency. So in that scenario, like Sapphire has a GPU where you have an eight phase VRM, except there's 16 low side MOSFETs and then eight high sides and eight inductors. And that's completely valid. That's, you can do that. That's actually complete, that, that, that's a good thing because you increase the efficiency of the low side of the low side of the, the VRM. Like, it's basically, um, like, th that's basically the whole, um, as a general guideline, the maximum phase current should be kept to 30 to 40 amps, but if you wanted to get a really ridiculous single phase current rating, one of the ways to do it is to just cram more low side MOSFETs in there and then get a faster, and then, hell, put everything in parallel, you know, get a giant inductor that can handle a ridiculous amount of current and then put ginor, like a ton of MOSFETs. The main reason why nobody does that is at some point your MOSFETs, um, like the, the time to turn, like there are power MOSFETs for like driving DC motors out there, which can handle stupid amounts of current, like absolutely insane. But you would never, ever, ever use them for a multi-phase buck converter because those MOSFETs take a month to turn on and off, okay? Like, if you're, if you're running like a 200 250 kilohertz, 10% 10, uh, 10 duty cycle, um, you know, buck converter, and then your MOSFET takes several hundred nanoseconds to go from turned off to turned on, it won't work <laughs> because your, your duty cycle is shorter then your MOSFETs rise and fall time. And if you have something like that, it's just not going to run. So that's why you wouldn't see those kinds of MOSFETs. Um, and then you get the same, and that's the main issue for like why you can't just keep stacking more and more and more low side MOSFETs into a phase because the more low side MOSFETs you have in parallel, the higher, the longer it takes to turn them on because the more gate capacitance they have or gate charge they have. So you don't, you know, like that. That's why here it's uh, it's said between thirty to forty amps because that is generally where you'll top out without having to spend, like without you know getting really high power driver ICs or really really expensive MOSFETs, um, that kind of thing. So if you just want, because your cost per phase at around thirty to forty is where you get the best sort of cost per phase balance. And th then it's easy to just scale up the phase count from there. But, yeah, so 
you know, there there are a good there there's valid reasons to double how many components you have in a phase. Um, that doesn't mean you have more phases. Okay, that doesn't make the motherboard have more phases. And it's funny because like MSI and ASRock and Asus, all of these companies, they could all advertise like this could be advertised like by Gigabyte's logic, this would be an eight plus two, except it isn't. It's 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 a four plus two. And MSI doesn't even talk about the, the, the way the VRM is achieved here. And that's fair. Um, you know, I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> Admittedly, it's it's still a trap for, you know, inexperienced, well, Re there's reviewers out there who don't know how phases work, so they'll totally see this motherboard and tell you it's an eight phase when it's not. Um, and then consumers who, you know, like, for for the most, like, thanks to Gigabyte going like, oh yeah, this is an eight phase, right? And it's just like, oh yeah, you have eight inductors, so you have eight phases. And it's just like, well, no, no, you don't. You, you don't have eight phases. Unless you're, unless you literally define phases as inductor count. And if you do that, okay, if you do that, um, if we were to say, okay, a phase is just however many inductors you have, well, um, would there be anything stopping me from just doing this and just claiming, oh, now I have a three phase? Is that a f three phase gigabyte? What about this? Is that a four phase? Is it? I don't think that's a four phase. And we can just keep going forever, you know. You can you can stack as many inductors in parallel as you like. You're gonna have to change the like you have to change their inductance values and um, everything. But you can keep stacking them. There's nothing stopping you from doing that, you know. And you can claim that you have you know a million phases that way, and you'll have a motherboard that to most consumers and most reviewers will actually look like it has a million phases. Just that there's not actually, like, you. hell, you could do it off of one MOS, you could do it off of one low side and one high side MOSFET if you wanted to. You know, you could be the scumbag of the industry. You could put as many inductors on that VRM as you ever wanted. And it would look, and most people wouldn't know any better. So basically, okay, Gigabyte either needs to, like, decide what they're, like, here's the thing. Like, here, I, I'd say they have some, you know, they, they have some defense because there is literally twice as many highs. Like, you know, you could totally make a phase. Like, this does make a phase. And this does make a phase. So that, you know, like, here they have some ground. But on this board, that's not the case. Because this is one phase. This... This isn't a phase. That's not a phase at all. Okay, so either this, like, like, basically, I want to know what Gigabyte's definition of a freaking phase is at this point. Okay, because if their definition of a phase is any group of high inductor and low side MOSFET, because that's what it looks like right now, okay? And honestly, before, like, this was a sketchy definition, in my opinion. But w when you go to this level, it's like, okay, so if we went with that definition, um, I, I guess all I need to do for my craptacular VRM design here is just add an extra low side MOSFET. Whoa. And we're just going to pull that straight to ground. <laughs> Low. There. Is that is that that a is that now a three is that a three phase now? Um, there, totally a three phase, right? Totally a three phase. What what if we just keep stacking that? Okay, so basically, if Gigabyte just didn't, so you know, to some extent, if Gigabyte never went and put out the B four fifty gaming pro, and said that has eight phases. I wouldn't really have a problem with it because then they have a definition that's, you know, their definition of a phase is, it's not great, um, but it's it's consistent and it's fair because, yeah, a, a, a inductor, a high side and a low side does make a phase, but this doesn't have that. This literally doesn't have that. So make up your damn minds about what your what what the hell a phase is okay or or i have a better suggestion do what everybody else did and just don't talk about how many phases your motherboard has okay if you're not going to tell if you don't want to tell people the truth about how many phases your motherboard really doesn't freaking have then just don't say anything okay just don't
because in my opinion that is better because that is like the the whole issue of like the, the like again this i i can kind of see why you could say this is an eight how this is an eight i will never understand okay never ever because i like no <laughs> you know just no it's just because that, that's the problem. If, you're, if your definition allows me to just increase the phase count by just adding more low, low side MOSFETs and inductors, then you have a sh terrible definition of a phase. Okay, and personally, the, the, the definition of phase count I, like, I use is P individual PWM signals. Because that, I think, is the, fa the, the, the fairest one. Um, because when you have more PWM signals, which is why I consider having actual doublers, right? If you have real doublers like an ISL6617 or an International Rectifier 3599, or there's some on semiconductor, no, NCP something from, yeah, on semiconductor. Um, like, there, there's, you know, if you use a doubling scheme, I'll call it multiple phases because you will have multiple PWM signals, right? Like the, the phases won't turn on at the all on at the same time. Um, you'll basically hit most of these, uh, like you'll hit all four of these criteria, um, but Gigabyte's design only hits C, right? Somewhat. <laughs> it doesn't, like that B450 board doesn't even do C because they dropped that high side MOSFET. Um, but like D, A, and like if you can do like A and B, doublers will hit A and B mostly. And D, doublers will still like doublers won't really negatively impact it too much. But and, and C is just a given. Like a doubler gives you C always. Like the, the bear, like if you don't use a doubler, you get C. If you do a doubler, then you get A, B, C, and most of D, right? So it's just like, so that's why I consider doubling schemes fair. Like they're, they're fine. And I will, you know, I will point out the differences between like a 6617 and a 3599 where the 3599 literally just takes a PWM signal and trades it between two phases without actually considering uh, current balance or thermal situations on either phase. That, that, that you know, that, uh, that doubler will literally just trade the PWM signal back and forth. And if one of those phases blows up or something, it'll still keep trading that PWM signal back and forth. Um, and from the perspective of the VRM, it's the, the, like, it won't, uh, but it'll still do the reduced input capacitance and output capacitance. It just won't be to as great an extent as if you had something like an ISL 6617, right? where the ISL6617 will actually do uh, duty cycle extensions. So it'll change how long, like if it notices that one phase is handling, um, you know, 35 or no, let's say 60 amps and the other one is doing 30 amps, then it will intentionally get more current onto the phase that is doing less current. And that extends the lifespan of the VRM and improves efficiency um, because your... Uh, your power loss space scales exponentially with current draw because uh, due to low uh, due to resistance, right? Because um, power loss uh, due to current through a resistor is p equals i squared, uh, p equals r times i squared, um, which totally applies to your low side MOSFET. Um, and you, you can just, you know, if so keeping good current balance significantly improves efficiency, it improves VRM thermals. And a 3599 doesn't do that. But, you know, if you have um, 20 amps going through one phase and 40, like 30 through one and 60 through the other, it's still better than having 90 across, you know, two of them at the same time. Um, so, yeah, but what Gigabyte has here, it doesn't use a doubler. Okay, there's not even two high side MOSFETs. Okay, which if they had the two high side MOSFETs, I'd be like, okay, I can, I like, I, I can kind of see what your definition of a phase is. It's not a definition I would consider particularly useful, but I, I, I can, I can tolerate it. But this, this takes it to new levels because, like, there's what? No, you you don't have twice as many components. You can't call this an eight plus three phase. You can call it an eight plus three inductors. You can call it an eight plus three low side MOSFETs. 
and that's about it really because there's the, like because the moment you talk about the high side it's a four plus three phase right there's four high side mosfets so yeah um this is um this is by far the fakest of the fake vr phase counts that i've seen i don't know there there might be a company somewhere that actually does that thing, like like does something like this, which I've drawn here, where it's just like, yeah, we're we're gonna just add inductors for days onto one phase, um, and that company is scum. But like, as far as I'm aware, I've never seen a mother like I've, admittedly, I don't look at low end motherboards that much, but I've never seen something like this, and this is not an eight phase at all, okay. That's not up, like, no. Because if Gigabyte's definition of an 8 phase is, uh, like, 8 low side MOSFETs and 8 inductors, then, I, I, I don't, like, it's just wrong. <laughs> it's just freaking wrong, you know? Because they don't interleave. Um, there's not enough components in here to actually be an 8 phase. Okay, if you wanted to interleave them, if they actually upgraded to an 8-phase voltage controller, this still wouldn't have enough MOSFETs. Um, so, no, this is not an 8-phase. This is a 4 that tr that tries to look like an 8. And even the X470 Ultra Gaming, um, I, I wouldn't consider that an 8-phase because it doesn't interleave like one. It doesn't get all of the... It doesn't do A and B of the benefits, or D for that matter. It doesn't do A, B, or D of the benefits that Texas Instruments lists. And for that reason, I wouldn't consider it an eight phase, you know? And um, and I certainly, like, I wouldn't, and and even, you know, e even if it wasn't a bloody eight phase somehow, I wouldn't, like, the other issue is, it literally, if you compared it to a motherboard that actually has a real eight phase, it would perform much worse. Like, it would just be much worse than a motherboard with a real 8-phase in all of those parameters. So, no! <laughs> it's not an 8. Um, so, that's... That's that. You know, that that's, that's my view on that. And Gigabyte can say, you know, that this is an 8-phase, and that it's doubled, because they put twice as many inductors in low-side MOSFETs, but... It's not. <laughs> it just bloody isn't. Okay? Because there's no doublers, and just, like, put two MOSFETs in parallel are literally equivalent to one MOSFET. Okay? Literally. Like, they are. Like, if you took this motherboard, right, and you desoldered all of the MOSFETs Gigabyte put on there, and, re and all of the inductors, and then just replaced them with components of the equivalent spec but in one chip right it would be a four, then it would be a four phase suddenly right and i i think that is just like that is not the like yeah that that's basically my view on that and gigabyte needs to like i don't know uh, like like they, they could just shut up about how many phases they have I think that would be the that would be the best for all of us. They don't have to admit that they have a four phase, and I don't have to read about how the and I don't have to read lies, you know. Um, and, and we won't have this argument. And when I do my PCB breakdown, I'm gonna say it's a four, and it's gonna be a four. <laughs> it's gonna run like a four, um, and yeah. So, damn, this video turned out really, really long. It really doesn't have to be this long, but I'm just so angry about this, especially because I got a response from a Gigabyte representative. Admittedly, my comment on that r slash AMD post was me literally just, you know, caps lock, bold, with a million exclamation marks, fake. That was my entire comment. Oh, and with, you know, way too many letters. Um, basically, it's me yelling fake in text um, as loudly as I can. And I and they they gave me a nice little essay about how this motherboard has doubling. So here's my response: Your definition of doubling is really damn sketchy. If this is what like, you know, because then then you could triple, and tripling doesn't work. Like there's no such thing as a tripler. Um, there's a quad. There's quadruplers. There's doublers. 
and you can technically ca cascade some doublers. I'm not sure if you could cascade them to the point of octupling, but you, I, I guess you could. I, I, I don't think you would actually want to do that, but you probably could do it. Um, but if your definition of doubling is just smacking more low side MOSFETs and inductors into a VRM, then, like, that, that is just a terrible definition, you know? Um, yeah. So, that's it for the video. Um, I, incidentally, I'm not saying this is a bad VRM or a good VRM. I've not tested any of the B450 boards, okay? It can be a four, like, like just for, for the sake of comparison, like, none of the B450 boards I'm aware of has more than four phases. So, Gigabyte isn't, um, you know, if it wasn't for the freaking lying about how many phases they have, they're not doing anything that wrong here. They have four plus three phases, like more, which is actually, I think, one of the higher phase counts for B450. I think Asus is doing four plus two across their entire lineup, ASRock is doing a three plus three, and, um, which ASRock's three plus three looks like this, and that totally tries to look like a six plus three, but it's a three plus three. Um, and then, and then uh, MSI is doing a four plus two, and uh, and I think a three plus. Yeah, MSI is doing like a four plus two across most of their boards, and I think they even have some three phase boards. So I really don't see why Gigabyte feels so insecure about having the same freaking phase count as everybody else that they need to tell us that they have eight when they don't. Okay, and that they need to bend the definition of what doubling is to the point where you could triple the phases by like putting three times as many MOSFETs and inductors on, on one driver. You know, it, I mean, like the driver wouldn't like you for it because that's a lot of capacitance it needs to deal with. But if you had a strong enough driver, you could totally do that. I mean, you, there's no real limit, you know, and, and, and yeah, so that, that's kind of that. Um, this is not an eight phase. That's not an eight phase either. You know, before I kind of tolerated this, but now it's just like, oh, if if you're gonna go, if you're gonna go to the lengths of what the B450 board has, then I'm just gonna go, you know, the opposite direction. This is a four plus three. <laughs> um, though the gaming seven is a ten plus two. This is like this is a ten plus two phase VRM because this has doublers. It uses thirty five ninety nines. This is a ten plus two. This doesn't have any doubling, so it's not an eight plus three. Okay, cool. I'm glad that that that's it's covered. Uh, I, 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 I'm just, I, I, yeah. Let's end the video here. So, thank you for watching. Um, like, share, subscribe. Um, leave any comments, questions, or suggestions down below. And if you'd uh, like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking because I think I've just royally pissed off everybody at Gigabyte. <laughs> Which is really bad because it was like, oh, and I got a month. Well, I mean, after the most recent live stream, I guess, whatever. <laughs> I don't have much. I don't have many regrets now. Um, but yeah, so uh, yeah, if you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, then. I have a Patreon, I have a PayPal, and I have t-shirts. And also, new announcement for all the, the patrons, um, there's now a patrons-only Discord. I will try to also roll out that Discord to Twitch subscribers, also anybody who sends in any hardware, so, you know, because, you know, people like dead GPUs or something, um, if you send one of those in, then I'll also try to give you Discord access if I can track down your email or message and this is why I prefer if it's on email because that's easier to search than like Reddit messages um, or Facebook messages. So yeah, um, that's kind of that. There, there's a Discord and basically on that Discord I, I post a bunch of stuff like teasers in advance of what's happening. So yeah, um, that's that and uh, thanks for watching and goodbye.